Good morning, good morning, good morning. So good to be here. We're small in crowd, but God is good all the time, man. Amen. So we're going to praise his name anyway. That's right. The glory land way. I'm in the way, the brightest shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Remove those cares 
those worldly cares from our mind right now and help us still or to focus our attention upon worshiping you. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you for this past week. Thank you, dear Lord, for the blessings of life. And Father, we continue to be in prayer for all of our members that are going through challenging times right now. Yes. Father, we just pray that you touch them and cover them and have favor upon them. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I just keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Well, it gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what love between my Savior and Psalms 103, 
verses 1 through 12. Say amen if you have it. Amen. All right. And it reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yes. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine disease, yes. who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. I just read to you Psalms 103, verses 1 through 12. May the Lord add a blessing to those who hear and do his will. And after a song, we will go to our Father in prayer. Thank you, Lord, Lord, I thank you.
You kept us in your long arms of protection. Yes. But now, Father, we are gathered here again to worship you in spirit and the truth. And for that, we want to say thank you. <clears throat> Father, our heads are bowed, our hearts are heavy. Yes. We have lost another soldier. We're praying right now for Sister Bowman, the Lord. We're praying that you bless her with your strength, your love, your mercy, and your grace. Father, she was a caregiver to her daughter. Not only caring for her daughter, but also caring for herself as well. And Father, we just ask that you lift her up high. Be with her, the Lord, and comfort her. And let her know that we, as her brothers and sisters in Christ, are right here for her. Father, we want to pray on behalf of this year. We lost a lot of members. The Lord, we're praying for each and every family who have lost loved ones this year. We're praying, the Lord, that you bless them in a mighty, mighty special way. Because that void is not empty. That, 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 that voice that they used to hear is no longer here. Yes. But the Lord, we pray that you bless them in their hearts, Amen. that their spirit continue to rest and rule and abide with us. To let them know, the Lord, we thank you for the time they shared on this time side of life. Father, we lay at the feet of your throne our leadership. We pray for Brother Holly that you continue to bless, bless him, bless him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. We pray for Brother White as well. You bless him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Brother Cannon, you bless him from the top of his head to the bottom of his seat. We pray for Sister uh, Corey Gillum that you bless him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. We pray for Sister Brother Millerbrook as well. You continue to bless him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. The Lord, we bless this man that you continue to bless him with your love, your mercy, and your grace. As they continue to work together for the better good of that kingdom, we pray for their wives that continue to bless them as they stand beside their men, their Lord, and continue to encourage them to do good. We pray for their family in a mighty special way. But most importantly, Lord, we pray for brothers and sisters who are gathered here today that we uplift one another and never tear one another down. Yeah. For all our members who are out of town, the Lord, we pray that you bless them with traveling grace to and from their destination. The Lord, we want to pray right now a special blessing for Brother White. We pray the Lord that he have, he have uh, 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 meditate on these words of, uh, of encouragement on today. We pray the Lord that you bless him, that he bring a word that he always do strong. And we pray the Lord that you continue to bless him in a mighty special way. We pray for Sister White who is home right now, who is under the weather. We pray the Lord that you stop by and touch her, touch her mind, body, and soul. Comfort her, the Lord and give her the thing that she needs. Yeah. Father, we pray for our visitors who are going to come be with us today, who are in this building of virtual, the Lord, that Brother White will say something that would uplift them, that they can give their life over to you. Yeah. Father, just bless us, keep us in your long arms of protection. Yeah. Bless our veterans, dear Lord, on Veterans Day, those who have yeah. lost their lives, those who have given their life to serve this country. We pray, the Lord, that you bless them in a mighty, mighty special way. Yeah. Continue to be with us, guide and protect us until us. So we continue to love you, endure you, and just thank you for everything you have done for us. Yes. In your Son and our Savior, King Jesus Christ's name, and we all say it. Amen. 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 As I travel through this field of that there is a friend. Hold on. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us and change it up. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King let it rise. Oh, 
church say amen. amen. Church say amen again. Amen. If you're surely glad that you're in this house of the Lord to let the spirit of the Lord rise among us, let us smile and say again. Amen. Say amen again. Amen. We want to give thanks to the Almighty God for blessing us to be in this place today. I'm thankful that I'm here on this first day of the week to bring a word from the Word of God. Uh, this has been a mighty long week this past week, y'all. I had a 10 penny grass moment. When that election results wasn't going the way I wanted, I, I said to myself, turn it off. I just turned the TV off. I had a moment, y'all. I had to really do some serious meditating, uh, which really uh, have helped me to uh, formulate my sermon <laughs> and I'm bringing it today because I needed some help. Because uh, I, was, I was down, deep down. I had my own little watch party going for myself. <laughs> my wife, uh, she had already uh, turned, turned in for the night because she had to go to work the next day. Uh, but I was up. I told her I had my little hot wings and stuff earlier that day. And, and uh, that night just went south on me, y'all. I had, I, I, y'all forgive me. I had one of the moments that night. That was, that was a rough night. But God is good. Uh, we're here today, and, uh, and, and that's, that's in the past. Ain't nothing we can do about that. Ain't nothing we can do. The people have spoken, and they're going to be crying, <laughs> but they have spoken. <laughs> but I'm just thankful to be here on the time side of life. It's good to see all of those that are visiting with us today. We're very glad to have you here uh, in, uh, in Emerald City. So just sit back and relax and enjoy this uh, worship experience. And I'm thankful again to be in this pulpit of wood. Uh, my number got called. Uh, this, this is a back to back for me, almost for Ken. So I told y'all sometimes it just how it goes. If Doc not here, Fred not here, guess who up? It's me. <laughs> so I got to leave here and go across town as well. So y'all pray for me. Uh, I got Brother Duckworth and Brother Whiting with a, with a time or something to give me a little salute to to uh, help me make sure I'm staying on pace today, but um, I feel good, but at the same time, I feel a little, it's a little bittersweet. Uh, it's sweet that I'm up here in this pulpit, but it's bitter that my wife's not here with me. Uh, you, just, you, know, you just feel something different. So I hope that my delivery and everything go well. I, you know, I'm used to looking right here, and it ain't there. So, so, so just pray for my wife, she, that she'll feel better. She uh, had to go. Uh, to the doctor, she got checked out. She had a bad ear infection that now I believe has resulted into a sinus infection. So uh, she's had a lot of pain on the right side of her face. So just pray for her. Because uh, she woke up this morning, she was in pain. So I said, you just need to stay here. So I I'll make it through. So she, she really wanted to, she was going to try to get up and come, but she it just wouldn't work. So just pray for her. Uh, and I, I would appreciate that. And Sister Bolden, our heart goes out to you. We're keeping you lifted up in prayer. Uh, because Dee Dee was on the street. She, she was a sweet sister. Yes, we loved us some Dee Dee. So God uh, knows best and we're thankful for the years and then for him uh, having her a part of our lives. So we're in prayer for Sister, Sister Bolden uh, because our Lord and Jesus, for a mother to lose a daughter, that is, that is, that is hard. And, uh, but, but God is going to do what he can to keep our love, Sister Bolden, strong in the entire family. Uh, during this very difficult time. Let's continue to also pray for uh, Sister Olivia, uh, who had surgery, and now she's uh, recovering. I pray that that would go well with her, but Olivia lost her aunt as well, sister, or great loss of sister a week or two ago. So let's pray for that family yeah. as well. So let's just continue to lift each other up. Amen. Continue to lift our brother Paul yeah. up as well, because you know he lost, he lost Liz right. a couple of weeks ago. So let's pray uh, for, for all of them are doing this very, very difficult time. Uh, but let me let me grab a text. I uh, appreciate the brethren, the outstanding job of the dean. I appreciate I had to look at him sideways because he, uh, he, he wasn't saying my song started. I was like, wait, 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 what, 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 what you doing? So he flipped the script on it. So we, we got to sing my song that I wanted to hear. So uh, he human. So we love you, brother dean. God bless you. Because uh, when you know what you're doing, you can, you can pump the brakes real quick. And turn the page. So appreciate Brother Dean. Uh, appreciate Brother Duckworth for that very powerful prayer. Appreciate Brother Bishop Cannon for opening us up and Brother Boris for reading the sacred text. And we're just uh, mindful of those online that we do not have internet service at this point. Uh, they are going to record it and post it later. It's what the plans are. So we apologize for that inconvenience. Uh, but we do have power 
Amen. So if we would not have power, you would not hear this reverb in my bass on this mic. <laughs> but we do have power and the lights are on, so that's good. And uh, I was telling Brother Dean, I was up after midnight making sure that I got the slides and everything that you're seeing now done. And I just brought my flash drive, put it on the computer. We don't need an internet for that. So we're good. We're rolling like nothing. Y'all didn't even know what was out, did you? So, see, that's what's there. We got to keep it seamless. So we appreciate that. And we want to uh, definitely take time out. We'd be remiss if we did not recognize tomorrow as Veterans Day. We want to honor all of our vets uh, who have given their lives and dedicated their service to this country to keep us safe, uh, to keep us in, uh, in the mode that we're in to be free at this time. So we appreciate all of this, those who have served uh, for this great country. May God bless you and your family. And I just pray that they can do even more for veterans. Yeah. Yeah. Veterans need to be given carte blanche yeah. as far as not having to worry about nothing. As far as I'm concerned, but that's just me. But I'm not running president or anything like that. You know, I'm just saying. I just thought it out there. You know, my little two cents might count every now and then. Like, you know, I'm just saying. Every now and then I have an out of out experience that was one of them. So. <laughs> But uh, let's just pray for our veterans. We thank you, we honor you, and we love you, and we appreciate all of what you've done to serve this country. Let's grab a text uh, this morning. Let's go to Philippians uh, chapter 4. Two long verses, Brother Gillen. Verses 6 and 7. And it reads from the, uh, the Apostle Paul penned these words to the church at Philippi. Beginning verse 6, chapter 4. Be careful or be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. yes. But in everything, by prayer yes. and supplication, yes. with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Right. And the peace of God, yes. which passes all understanding. Lord, no, we need some understanding right through it here. Shall keep your hearts and minds, how? Through Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, please allow me to take a moment to take for a subject this morning uh, using the Psalms 103 that Brother Borch read and this Psalms, uh, this verse of text from Philippians, consider for a subject, the key to peace is a thankful heart. Yes. The key to peace mm -hmm. is a thankful heart. Yes. And Brother White, what do you mean by a thankful heart? I mean, when we talk about a thankful heart, we're talking about thanksgiving. Yeah. We have so much to be thankful for. And many times we let the devil get us on the ropes and get us so uptight, get us so anxious and so full of anxiety. We forget about all the blessings yeah. that God has blessed us with. Yeah. And we go to worry about tomorrow. We go worry about all this other stuff. But at that time and at that moment, we need to pause and just have a thankful heart yeah. yes. about what all God has done for us, yeah. what he's doing for us and what he'll do for us in the future. So I want to use for three brief points. Point number one, Thanksgiving comes when we look up. Right. Amen. Thanksgiving also comes when we look around. Well, Thanksgiving also comes when we look ahead. Amen. The key to peace is a thankful heart. Right. Thanksgiving comes when we look up. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving also comes when we look around. Right. And it also comes when we look ahead. So bear with me just for a few moments as we look into this text and try to find and make some sense out of what had happened this past week. Well. This might get thrown in there somewhere in there, but I'm just want to get all of our hearts on the right thing. Come on now. Because we need to understand that God is still large and in control. Right. 
No matter what happens in life, no matter what happens in our struggles, no matter what happens in politics, God is still in control. And so when we look at this text under consideration this morning, when we look at this first point of Thanksgiving comes when we look up. As an introduction, I want us to see, first of all, that when we talk about peace, as it's used in the context of Scripture, there are three basic types of peace that are mentioned in Scripture. The Holy Writ mentions the peace of God that comes with salvation in Romans 5, verse 1. It says, how? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we get peace. Right. It also mentions the peace of God that comes through total surrender to God in all things. How much is all things? All Everything. All. Yeah. Yeah. No matter whether it's good or bad, we need to surrender all to God in all things according to Scripture. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 and John 14, 1 in, in verse 27. The peace on earth that comes with Jesus is Christ, Jesus Christ establishing his kingdom and his reign in glory and in power. We need to have peace when it comes down to understanding how that took place. Isaiah 2, verses 1 through 4. Uh -huh. So this passage before us today, it deals with the peace of God that comes with the total surrender to God in all Things, not just some things, not when just things are going well, not when we got money in the bank, not when we got a job, but in everything that's going on. Right. We need to give thanks and surrender all Amen. things to God. Amen. It is the peace of God in times of trouble. It is the peace of God that overwhelms our worries and our concerns that helps us to rest in the will of God, even when we cannot see. What lies ahead. And we know for sure well, after Tuesday, we don't know what lies ahead. Preach out. But we have to put all of our faith and confidence in the Almighty God. Amen. The key to having this kind of peace lies in possessing a thankful heart. Right. Thanksgiving is an important theme throughout the Holy Writ. It is mentioned over 140 times, y'all. So Thanksgiving has to be important if it's mentioned that many times in the Bible. Uh -huh. David spoke about it in Psalms 103, as Brother Rick read this morning, the list of God's blessings, the list of his benefits. Y'all right. know about benefits, don't Come you? On, preach out. Ben you have benefits on the job. You have benefits when you get a certain type of insurance. You also have a benefit when you're a child of God. Amen. Amen. And so often and so so many times we forget about those benefits, those blessings that God blesses us with. So uh -huh. David expounds upon that in, in Psalm 103 and he makes that an inexhaustible list and makes us, him makes God worthy rather of all of our thanksgiving. Yes. Daniel even practiced thanksgiving. In Daniel chapter 6 around verse 10 where Daniel demonstrates the power of giving thanks even when you are in the midst of trials. Daniel knew that that decree had been signed and yet he still kept his, his, his practice of going to God, looking up to God and giving him thanks yes. for all of his blessings. Yes. The scripture says that now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, what writing was that? That if anybody goes praying to a God, they will be thrown in the lion's den. Well, you think that stopped Daniel? No. In the midst of all of that he was getting Amen. ready to go through, he still gave God thanks. Amen. He gave thanksgiving, even in the midst of his trial. In the middle. So your thanksgiving comes when you look up. Uh -huh. And that's what Daniel did. He looked up. Right. Paul even wrote about it in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. It says, God deserves, commands, and expects our thankfulness in all areas of our life at all times. All. Preach up. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, in everything, mm -hmm. give thanks. thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yes. The key to experiencing the peace mentioned in verse 7 of our text lies in possessing a thankful heart. Mm -hmm. That is the key to peace. When you got peace, you don't worry about nothing. That's right. When you're at peace, you are chilling out. Preach out. 
You are taking a chill pill and you said, let all of that chaos keep going on. <laughs> I'm focused right here on God. Amen. I am not going to worry myself about this. I ain't losing no more hair. Well, preacher. <laughs> Oops, too late. <laughs> preacher. We need to let that go. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you some reasons why I say that a thankful heart or thanksgiving is the key to peace. So we're talking about Thanksgiving comes when we look up. So verse 6 references in Philippians the cares of this life. That word careful means to be anxious or worried. Well, that word reminds us that sometimes the cares of life can make Thanksgiving very difficult. Now, it's not easy to just go on in life and then all of a sudden when stuff goes bad, you don't react to what's going bad. But when you focus on, on the Lord, when your mind is right and when you know who's in control, you will quickly pause. And say, thank you, Lord. I might be going through the middle of this, but I thank you for being my God. So we, we know and understand that it's difficult. We're not saying that it's easy. But we need to realize that Thanksgiving comes when we look up. And so we all go through those times when we have difficulties in our lives. And, but Jesus tells us in John 16.33 that... He, he, he said that these things I, I, I've spoken unto you, that in, in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why, Lord, I have overcome the world. So we need to have that peace. So when we take the time to stop and pause in the middle of our struggles yes. and look up to God for his assistance, we would discover that we have many reasons to give thanksgiving. Because mm -hmm. we've been seriously doing some thanks living. Well, from benefiting from all of those blessings through the Almighty God. Yes. So we need to understand that we need to look up and we would discover that God is at work even in the middle of our pain. God is at work. Right. Romans 8 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. So we need to understand that God is ever present even in the midst of our pain. The Hebrew writer says in Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God will provide even in our pain. He will do what is sufficient to take care of both our material and spiritual needs. He says in Matthew 6, 25, 24, and, and also even in 2 Corinthians 2, 12, verse 9, he says, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So when you're going through all that stuff, you got to look to God because he can give you that peace to help you make it through all of that chaos, all of that turmoil that you're going through on your job, all that chaos that you're going through at home with the crazy husband or with the crazy wife. Either way, you can find peace in the middle of all of that. God is interested in our pain and he invites us to bring our concerns, our cares, our struggles to him out in prayer. Hebrews 4, 15 to 16 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come how? Boldly unto the throne of grace. Why? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help when? In time of need. That's where we got to go, y'all. To find that peace that passes all understanding. You, all you need to do is look up when you're in your thanksgiving. That's what Job did. Job, despite losing his children, his livestock, his servants, Job praised God and humbled himself before God. This man lost everything. He didn't curse God even though his wife told him to. Job kept his faith 
and his focus and his trust in God. Even though God said, have you considered my servant Job? Yeah. We yeah. talked about that man from us, y'all, that Brother Holly was talking about. Yes. The devil came at this man. Yes. He lost everything. Mm -hmm. But he still remained humble and focused on the Almighty God. Paul and Silas prayed God and prayed to him while in jail after being beaten. Mm -hmm. So you see, it's not all about us. But it's also about God. Amen. Even we remember Moses. And the children of Israel were literally at a point where their backs were against the Red Sea. And Pharaoh's army was coming behind them. They were literally caught between a rock and a hard place. But Moses had to tell, hey look, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. But God knew exactly what he was doing. God was in control of all of that. There's a book that's written that's, that's called The Red Sea Rules. What in the world is the Red Sea Rules? The Red Sea Rules is the same God who led you in will lead you out. That's what the Red Sea Rule is. So many of us are in the same predicament sometimes. We're caught between a rock and a hard place. Lord led you into that place. The same Lord can lead you out of that. We need to have confidence in that. Knowing that even though we're in this mess, in this trouble, in this trial, in this tribulation, God can get us out of this. He was there with us when we went in. And he'll be there with us when we come out. Moses understood that. So I stopped by to tell you this morning, we don't have to wait for Thanksgiving Day. We don't have to wait for 18 days from today for Thanksgiving. We can give thanks right now. When we look up. All we got to do is say, thank you, Lord, for watching over us and seeing us through. We need to pause and discover an ever-present thanksgiving for the Almighty God. So thanksgiving comes when we look up. And then secondly, thanksgiving comes when we look around. Thanksgiving comes when we look around and this clicker don't want to click. But now it's clicking. Thanksgiving comes when we look around. When we look at verse 6, it suggests a life that is lived in a close, fully dependent relationship with God. When we take the time to stop and look at all the blessings that we enjoy because of our relationship with the Almighty God. It is easy to see why we should be a thankful people. Try to tell our kids that. But Mark, our kids don't get it yet. They need to understand that they should be some most thankful kids. Thankful people, thankful children, thankful parents, thankful grandparents. We need to be a more thankful people. We need to stop and take a spiritual inventory of all the blessings that we enjoy in the Lord. We Earlier, I mentioned in, in, in Psalm 103 that the Psalm, David cataloged the blessings of all those blessings the Lord calls on for people to remember those blessings, remember those benefits, Brother Ken. All of those benefits that the Lord has blessed us with. He talks about Remember those blessings in verse 2 and to praise the Lord for those blessings in verse 1. So bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. What benefits? What blessings? It, it, it one thing, I might be going outside on the box or out of body experience right here, but it's one thing that bothers me. And I know... I don't know whether people do it on purpose or maybe I, I'll just say they don't understand what they're saying. Because I see it on Facebook and I hear people say it. They say, I feel blessed. Think about that. I feel blessed. When I hear that, I'm going, like, wait a minute. Are you blessed or you're not? You can't feel blessed. If you're not blessed. So why go? To me, when you say you feel blessed, you're not acknowledging to God that he has blessed you. 
You say, yeah, I can't feel. <laughs> no, 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 no. You blessed or you're not. Right. You just receive something that is a blessing. Right. And you express it that you feel like you're blessed. I'm just saying, it's, it might be just me. But I got a problem with that. Well. You need to acknowledge and give God the glory. Amen. That you have been blessed. Right. This is not a feeling. You are blessed. Right. Number one, you're alive. Did you feel alive? Well, well. <laughs> okay, you blessed. But I just thought like this. Okay, let me go. Let me come back inside myself. I'm just saying. But we got so many benefits, so many blessings that we just take for granted. And some of those blessings, some of those benefits include forgiveness. Right. We have forgiveness that we take for granted. And that's in, 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 in the Psalms in verse 3 uh, of, verse, of chapter 103, verses 3, verses 8 to 12. We have spiritual help, right. verse 3. We have redemption, mm -hmm. verse 4. We have blessings, verse 4. We have satisfaction, well. verse 5. We have strength, yeah. verse 5. We have the word of God in verse 7. We have God's infinite mercy. Mercy. Verse 8 and verse 17, we have our family relationship with God. Verses 13, we have his patience. Verse 14, think of all that we have in Christ Jesus. Yes. All of those blessings. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm truly blessed yes. to have all of that. All of those benefits. His love, his mercy, his grace, his salvation and forgiveness, the word of God, the church, the privilege of prayer. In verse 6, Thanksgiving adds the element of expectation to the act of prayer. Thanksgiving allows faith to expect an answer to the prayers it offers. Now stop and think of how the Lord has blessed you. Everybody in this auditorium. Even Brother Cannon, we got any roaches walking around here. They blessed. They need to stop and look up and say, I'm blessed. Because somebody left a crumb around here and I'm going to. I mean, God, God take care of those folks too. Them, them, them old animals too. But we don't have anything, God. We had seen it anyway. And let's pray that we don't. But we have so much to be blessed for. When we think about financially, think about that. We have jobs. We may not get, be getting paid as much as we should be, as much as our value is, but we have a job. Because there's a lot of folks that don't have a job. We are blessed financially. We have support. We have jobs to support our loved ones and ourselves. And at the end of the month, some of us have more money at the end of the month than they had at the beginning of the month. That's a blessing, y'all. Some of us have savings account. What's that? Some of us are able to save money. If you don't have kids or grandkids going in your pocket, you're able to save something. That's a blessing. Some of us have 401k IRAs inside and out. That's a blessing. Don't take that for granted. Many of us have bills that get paid every month. You're able to pay your bills. That's the best. Sure, we don't, we don't like bills, but some bills you're going to have regardless. You see these lights on? You got to have lights. You're plumbing? You got to have plumbing. But you got a job to pay for all that. We're blessed, y'all. And we take a whole lot for granted. That's financial, y'all. But what about physical? Many of us here were able to walk through those doors. We had good use of our limbs, arms and legs. Some of us may be walking a little slower now, but that's a blessing. Because you're getting older and you're able to enjoy that time. That's a blessing. So don't knock yourself because you're old. If you're still making it, you still got it. You still got a blessing. Don't take that for granted. There are many people that didn't get to be your age. Some people died at age 20. Some young Infants died at birth. Some died in their 30s and 40s. Here you are still kicking it in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. That's a blessing, y'all. Don't take it for granted. That's the physical. Many of us still got our eyesight. We might have bifocals and trifocals, but we got our eyesight now. 
Spiritually, we have redemption. We have forgiveness of our sins. We've been baptized into Jesus Christ. We have the word of God. God, we have grace and we have mercy. That's a blessing that we shouldn't take for granted. Many of us are with family and friends. It is a blessing to be with family. I'm blessed to be a, 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 the youngest of 10 children. And here I am, 66 years old, and only two of my siblings have passed on. They were older than me. My mother lived to be 90, uh, 90 years old. I thank God for that. And I still have eight siblings, or seven siblings, I'm the eight. <laughs> okay, I got lost on my math right there for a minute. I still have seven siblings that I'm growing closer and closer to every single day. Nieces and nephews, I got two grandbabies. Lord have mercy. That's a blessing. That's a blessing to have family and friends. And let me talk on the friends a little bit. These friends. Watch out. Some of you got some good friends. Uh -huh. You got a good friend when they, when the good friend will tell you when you're right and when you're wrong. That's right, preacher. Those other friends will walk away when you don't call them or invite them somewhere. Right. You don't need them anyway. Uh-huh. And then when all they when all those friends leave, guess who guess what friend you got? You got a friend in Jesus. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. Don't take that for granted. And then of course, we have a home in heaven. Well, when we leave this place, we know when this place is no longer afford us a home. Well, we know we got a mansion robe and crown for them. Yes. That's waiting on us. Uh -huh. We got a place where we don't have to have all these aches and pains no more. We got right. a home that we can go with. When this body says, this, I'm tired, go and call me home. Well, heaven be our home. We have that. All we got to do is take a look around. That's what we got. All of those blessings we enjoy as God's children. We have all of that. Even we have it by answering our prayer, the moving of mountain, the meeting our needs and comforting our hearts. We have all of that and the offering of the unconditional love and forgiveness. All we got to do is look up and look around. We got all that in Christ Jesus. Yes. And as we prepare to close, Thanksgiving comes when we look ahead. That's right. Thanksgiving comes when we look ahead, we've seen how we should look up and how we should look around. Mm -hmm. But also, we should look ahead. Yes. Of what God has in store for us. Right. Verse 6 mentions anxiety and worry. Hmm. That flourishes any time there is doubt and well, fear. Well. The area of life most often consumed with doubt is the future mainly about what's going to happen tomorrow well we just don't know what tomorrow will bring and that lack of knowledge fills us with fear mm -hmm. of what we don't know the unknown doubt cringes and cowers and fear over the disappointments and losses and troubles tomorrow may hold faith however welcomes the future with grateful optimism mm -hmm. faith looks to the future with confidence because faith knows who controls tomorrow well Romans 8 28 and we know all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the call according to his, his purpose right you see faith knows the God who plans tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Right. Faith knows the God who safely leads his people through today and through all the models of life. Mm -hmm. That's what faith does. Psalm 37, 23. 
the steps of a good man are ordered, ordered. by the Lord. Yes. And he delighted in his way. So why can faith be so hopeful when it looks ahead? Verse 8 tells us that faith focuses its attention on the things that glorify God and on the things that lead the saints closer, closer. to the Almighty God. You see, faith is thankful. Yes. That's what we've been talking about. The key to peace is a thankful heart. Uh -huh. Faith is thankful. Yes. When it takes, when it, when it, when it, when it, when it, when it faces the future, because faith does not concern itself with tomorrow. That's right. Faith contents itself to look into the face of God, uh -huh. knowing that while tomorrow might be filled with the share of pain and disappointment. Well, Faith knows who holds all the tomorrows in his hand. Yes. Yes. When your eyes are on the Lord, you can face the future Preacher. with thanksgiving. Preacher. You can have a, a hallelujah shouting time yeah. when you know who holds the future. Yes. When your faith kicks in, you understand what's ahead. Right. You understand that God is in control. Uh -huh. The Lord knows that you can't do anything about the past. Right. You can't do anything about what's in your rearview mirror. Uh -huh. But God knows exactly what's ahead. Yeah. Right. That's why when you're having Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving comes when you when you look ahead. Uh -huh. When you look ahead by faith. By faith. Thanksgiving is a key uh -huh. to lasting peace. Uh -huh. When you look up you will find abundant reasons for thankfulness. Right. When you look around, even more reasons for thanksgiving present themselves to yourself. Yes. When you look ahead, you can do so with thanksgiving mm -hmm. when you know who holds your tomorrow. Yes. yes. What do you have to be thankful for? Do you have God to be thankful for your health? Yes. You have God to be thankful for your family. Well, you have God to be thankful for, for the life that you've lived thus far. Right. You, you, you be thankful. You have God to be thankful for being able to be here on this first day of the week. Yes. yes sir. To worship him and to give him all the glory and the honor that he deserves. Because everything that you have benefited from. Yes. From the day you were born. Preacher. All you got to do is look up. Yes. Look around. That's right. And look ahead. Uh -huh. And give thanks right. to the Almighty God. Amen. That's my lesson this morning. The key to peace <laughs> is a thankful heart. Amen. What do you have to be thankful for? God has given you another chance. Yeah. And I thank God he don't just give us a second chance. Come on, preacher. Because that will run out real quick for a whole bunch of us. <laughs> we serve a God of another chance. Right. Of another chance. That's what we need. Of another, because we're not perfect. Right, preacher. That's why the, the, the people that I teach now, a lot of people come into my class and they say, uh, I, I strive for perfection. <laughs> what you need to do is just strive to be better. That's it. Because you see what happened to the most perfect man that lived. Come on, preacher. They hung him high and stretched him wide. That's right. There's nobody perfect on this earth. That's it. Right now. Nobody. So why are you trying for perfection? Just try to do better. That's it. Because if you try for perfection, guess what? You're going to dry yourself. You're going to stress yourself out. You're going you're gonna to get depressed. So just try to do better. And that's all we all can do. To strive to be better husbands. Strive to be better children. Strive to be better wives. Strive to be better people. Yes. And this world will be a much better place. That's what can help us. Make this world to where it needs to be. If you're here today and you're not a child of God, you're living beneath your privileges. Privileges. You're losing out some, on some on a whole bunch of benefits that you only can get when you are in Christ Jesus. Well, how do you get in Christ? You get in Christ by hearing his gospel. How did he came into the sin cursed world? He died for your sins and he died for mine. He gave his life that we all might have life. Not just Abundant life on earth, but also when we leave this earth, mm -hmm. that heaven will be our home. The alternative is not where you want to go. 
and you don't want to get there and ask the question, well, what must I do to be saved? You need to ask that question today. Right. What must I do to be saved? Here is gospel. How he came into this world, he didn't have to, but he gave his life that we might have life eternally in heaven. Mm -hmm. He gave his life. He gave all of that. He was hung on that cross. He bled and he died, but thanks be to God, on the third day he third rose, day. according to the scripture. First mm -hmm. Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Believe that with all your heart. Repent of your sin. That is the hardest part of all of those steps, is to repent. repent. Be willing to change yeah. the way you've been going. Give your life over to God and not continue to be slave to this world. Because that's all you've been, is a slave to the world. Right. The world, the world has been, been, been selling you a, 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 a bad bag of goods. Right. They've been lying to you. Preach up. Been telling you stuff that's not right. The world is so messed up now, y'all. So many people are believing a lie. Matter of fact, we had millions of people lead lives on Tuesday. See that y'all made me go again. But but you see how the world is is is, is going mad. Our country is in trouble. People are in trouble. But the main thing that you can take care of today is your soul salvation. Amen. Let heaven be your home. Repent of your sins. Confess that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. And the Lord will add you to His church. Acts two forty seven. The Church of Christ. Romans 16 and 16. If you're here today and you're a child of God, perhaps you have forgotten to look up. Yes. When you know you needed God. Yes. And you decided to put your trust in man, put your trust in, in your employer, right. instead of putting your trust in your faith in God. Right. I'm telling you, your, your, your employer, your man will let you down. Yes. Come on, preach out. Yes. But Jesus said, I'll never forsake you or fail you. Yes. I will always be there for you. That's the type of person I want to put my faith in. Yeah. Somebody that keeps their promises. Because men, we will let you down. <laughs> oh, yeah. But God will never let you down. Man. God has never broken a promise. He cannot lie. Right. Yeah. Heaven will be your home. Yes. Yes. If you're here and you need to repent, you can, you can come forward. We'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. But we have to do better. We're not perfect, mm -hmm. but we can and we do have the opportunity today yes. to, do, to do better tomorrow than we did yesterday. Right. Yeah. If you're here today and you're suffering this invitation, we bid you come now as together we stand and sing. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, oh, oh yeah, heal my heart.
God, our Heavenly Father, we humbly bow at this time to give you thanks and praise yes. to your holy divine name. Dear Lord, we love you. We adore you. And the truth of the matter is we can't do anything without you. Lord, we're so thankful for this week. We're so thankful for all of your many and bountiful blessings. We thank you for all of your benefits. And dear Lord, as we assemble here today, we come on behalf of our dear brother Travis Smith, who's uh, asking for prayer and that he's repentant of sin. Dear Lord, we ask that you would bless Brother Travis in a very special way. Lift him up, dear Lord. Yes. Dust him off, dear Lord. Bring him back into the fold. Please. And that he's humbled himself and repented and brought himself back to you. Yes. Dear Lord, we're thankful for his courage. And we thank for dear Lord that he's here today to acknowledge his wrong. But we're thankful, dear Lord, that you are forgiving God. Yes. And that you would cast his sins into the sea of forgiveness and remember them no more. Yes. Dear Lord, Sister Cheryl Hall is requesting prayer for Mr. Harold Buchanan, who lost his mother. Uh, he's a member and co-worker, uh, asking prayers for him and his family during this time. Yes. Dear Lord, we're thankful for him being present today in worship with us. Yes. Dear Lord, bless Brother Buchanan in a very special way. For we know, dear Lord, it's very difficult to lose a mother. It's very difficult to lose a loved one. Yes. And dear Lord, we ask you to strengthen Brother Buchanan in a very special way. Hold him up, dear Lord, on every leaning side. Dear Lord, we're thankful that he's here with us today. And we're praying, dear Lord, that something has been said to encourage him, to give him the strength that he needs to look up to you and give thanks and praise to your holy and divine name. Because we know and you know that we serve an awesome God. And dear Lord, we're praying for every member that has remained standing, literally standing in the need of prayer. Dear Lord, we know that you know each of them by name. You know the hairs on their head, dear Lord. We know that they're numbered and we know that you know them. We just ask that you would come into each of their lives and bless them in the things that they're standing in need of. You know their specific needs, whether it be physical or spiritual. We ask you, Lord, you divine and divine. Help them, dear Lord, in their life, in their, in their family's lives, Lord. Give them the strength they need to continue to put you first in their life. And understand that we serve an awesome God who is able to do all things well. And dear Lord, we ask you prayers for our beloved Sister Lillian Boland, dear Lord, who's here even today. We continue to lift her up in prayer, dear Lord, and that she's lost her daughter. You call her, our beloved Sister Dee Dee home. Dear Lord, we thank you for the life uh, that you blessed Dee Dee to be here on this earth. We thank you, dear Lord, for the love that she showed us and we showed her. And we thankful, dear Lord, for her mother, her caring mother, who's been there to help her and to, be, and to bring her through as much as she could. Oh, yes. We thank you for her strength. We thank you for Sister Bolden and her faithfulness to this congregation. Yes. And we ask, dear Lord, you would strengthen her as only you can. Yes, we ask in prayers, dear Lord, for uh, Sister O'Gray and her family. Yes. Uh, Olivia, we're praying that she will heal and get well soon. And we continue to lift up our brother Hall that he's lost his sister. Oh, yes. Dear Lord, bless all of our members who've lost loved ones who are yes. going through very difficult times. Oh, yes. Bless all of our members who are struggling with their health. Bless Sister Deber, all of our senior uh, Golden Emerald. Bless Sister Walker, Sister yes. Sister Helen Smith, yes, Sister uh, uh, Guyton. Bless all of our members, dear Lord, who need you right now. Right now. Bless them in a very special way. Dear Lord, we'd be remiss if we did not mention uh, my wife, Charlotte, that you would bless her health. Yes. Restore her to read a portion of her health and strength. Please. Bless our minister. Bless his wife and his family. Yes, Dear Lord, bless this entire congregation in yes. a very special way. We ask that you would go with us now through the rest of the service. We pray that the things that we say and do yes. will be found both pleasing and acceptable in our sight. Oh, yes. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Let every heart that agrees say amen. 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 I'm calling you Savior. Two. 
Keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the 